With technological advancement, scientists have discovered ways to improve human activities with artificial intelligence. Initially, their investments were focused on improving business activities by producing tools that improve production and reduce cost. They went further into researching ways of creating robots and making them act like humans. They were successful in that. Over the years, we've heard of several scientific research projects that are aimed at creating a chip that would help humans communicate better with AI. Though many organizations have tried implanting microchips into the human brain, none have been able to succeed with that. Until recently, some scientists, under the leadership of the CEO of Neuralink, succeeded in implanting a wireless chip in a human being. Here's a broadcast from the BBC. Earlier this year, tech billionaire Elon Musk claimed his Neuralink company has successfully implanted one of its wireless brain chips in a human. In a post on X, formerly Twitter, he said promising brain activity had been detected after the procedure and the patient was recovering well. In another post on X, Mr. Musk said Neuralink's first product would be called telepathy. Telepathy, he said, would enable control of your phone or computer and through them almost any device just by thinking. Initial users will be those who have lost the use of their limbs, he continued. Though this achievement is interpreted in several means as believers, what comes to mind when you hear of microchips planted in the brain? Before answering that question, here's something to note. Besides the success of Elon Musk, several companies have strived to implant a chip in the human brain and create a duplicate of a human being influenced by artificial intelligence. Their aim is not to have robots that can only perform simple tasks, but to have a replica of what God has created, man. News has it that several billionaires in tech have plans to create microchips that can be inserted in the hand or forehead of their employees and in the long run, do the same for their customers. What's the position of the Bible on this? Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 to 18 says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. The mark of the beast will be a general symbol for both the rich and poor, the slaves and freeborn, the small and great. This mark will be positioned at a strategic position, the forehead or the right hand. What does this entail? Being marked on the hands symbolizes the actions of following the beast. Being marked on the head symbolizes direct agreement with the devil's beast system. The position of the mark of the beast is strategic. You can't hide who you believe in, and your decision will be visible to everyone. Bring marked brings you into a different class, a set of people who have decided to bow to the lordship of the Antichrist, the devil. Remember, the words of Jesus about the coming of the Antichrist in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, he said, Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. This statement draws our attention to the fact that before the Antichrist comes, many will come in his stead, projecting a false Christ. These Antichrists are humans, they are not spirits. Hence, it is important to be watchful of what is going on in our time. One tool the Antichrist will ride on is artificial intelligence. The Bible states that those who don't have the mark of the beast cannot trade, so how else will they be identified if not through AI? The implantation of microchips in the brain or hands of people has become an accepted venture, and top tech companies like Google, Intel, and Meta have announced their latest AI chips. These acts remind us of the Bible prophecies. Gradually, everything said in the Bible is playing out. Many tech experts have justified the place of microchips, stating that it will now become the base for a new global economy and it has no restriction to whatever business in the world. The plan is that everything will be AI enabled. Gradually and subtly, the idea of microchip implantation is gaining ground all over the world. One prominent chip called the RFID 
radio frequency identification, this chip has been in vogue for decades. It has served as a tool for tracking pharmaceuticals, library books, vehicles, and other tangible equipment. As the wave of technology sweeps over the world, some firms have implanted RFID chips in their employees. To them, this makes everything they need accessible without hindrance. Though many people do not see any issue with this development, to every believer, the prophecy of the end time will fully manifest someday, and when it does, those who have these chips in them may end up discovering that it is not just a chip, but a symbol of ownership and reverence to the beast. The Bible tells of the tag of the beast, which is 6666. This number is just like a barcode representing the beast. Many will be deceived to take the chip, and unknown to them, they have pledged allegiance to the beast. What happens to those who willingly receive the mark of the beast? Will they find solace in the world since they have access to everything they need? They may have all the access and benefits they desire, but their end will be destruction. Pledging allegiance to the beast makes them an enemy of God. They have renounced their faith in God and have accepted a false God. The beast is an enemy of God. He and the army he builds stand against God and the host of heaven. Anyone who receives the mark of the beast stands with the beast and by extension will receive the judgment of God. What's the judgment for the beast and all those who believe him? Revelation chapter 19 verse 20 reads, Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. This is the verdict of God on the beast and his agents at last. God rules over everything on earth, in heaven and beneath the earth. Despite giving power to the beast, a cursed principality to deceive many, God never lost his seat as the Almighty. Keep this in mind, contrary to the belief that microchips and AI are the mark of the beast, it is important to note that the trending microchip and artificial intelligence are not the mark of the beast, but are a precursor to that mark. No Christian should be accepting a microchip as if he is no more than an animal and not worthy to be trusted in telling the truth. The true mark of the beast is more than a technological device since it negatively affects the soul. But the truth remains that the Antichrist will ride on these means to deceive many people and lead them to hell. While this is true, every believer should be careful of what they accept. Many top companies around the world will accept this new technology of implanting microchips in their staff, which is another subtle way the spread of deceit and evil will prevail. Remember the Bible says, people will not be able to buy and sell. These are activities that improve the livelihood of man and everyone engages in a trade to survive daily. The ultimatum of receiving the mark of the beast will leave many with no choice but to accept it because of the need to survive. This draws our attention to the place of holding on to Jesus Christ in all we do and believe. There will be a high level of temptation it will take the grace of God to withstand the deceit of the false prophets. In spreading the reign of the beast and its mark, the false prophets will be instrumental. Their job is to lead man astray from God. They come with lies that glorify the beast, giving many reasons to accept the new government and stay away from God. These false prophets may not be found only in the church. In this sense, they will profess evil and the reign of the beast. What everyone should be mindful of is this. The false prophets are already in our midst. They could be in the church, top tech companies, and in government. They will hold certain positions of power and influence. The devil has strategically placed them in key positions in the society to hasten his plans. For every believer, here's what you should do. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41 says to you, keep alert and pray, otherwise, temptation will overpower you. In a season where there will be so many inventions that portray breakthroughs in science, it is important to keep your guard in whatever you accept and be led by the Spirit of God. 
Your faith will be put to the test, and many will waver in faith and belief in God, but you need to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Prayer should be a consistent task in your life like Jesus did, set out time to pray every day so that you remain aligned with God's will. Those who stay spiritually alert can never be taken unaware. Instead of getting scared because of the wave of bad news around the world, take time to pray and study the word. Jude chapter 1 verse 20 says, Building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. This scripture comes in handy when tribulation, trials, and temptations knock at the door. The Holy Spirit knows the mind of God and He can relate the will of God to us through our spirit and this can only manifest when you align your spirit in prayer. While we await the day of the Lord, it is important to abide by what Apostle Paul declared in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 18, which reads, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. This scripture should guide you as we hope for the day of the Lord. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 verse 4, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. This scripture explains the reason behind the invention of microchips, AI, and other technologies that try to imitate God's creation. Man seeks to know the technology behind the creation of man. They seek answers about the universe but never want to get those answers from God. They have resorted to using artificial intelligence making it look like a god, one that gives answers to everything. But in reality, AI can never replace God. It may provide answers to your questions about your career, visions and all, but there are many things AI can never do. The scenario playing out in the world today is similar to what happened in Genesis chapter 11 verse 4. It reads, And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Those who champion the task of inventing humanoids controlled by AI have the same motive, and that is to have an upper hand over the affairs of the world. What's the aim of all this? It is so that they can successfully shift man's focus from God to science, and by extension to the devil. This is one of the temptations that will plague the world, but here's something to note. Only God can offer long life, healing, joy, fulfillment, wisdom, promotion, and all the good things of life unconditionally. Science is limited, and so is the beast, antichrists, and the devil himself. They hide this truth from you, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ remains the best thing that has happened to mankind. As we await the coming of the Lord, hold fast to your hope and belief in Jesus. At the end, we shall be caught up in the cloud with Jesus Christ and we will sit at the right hand of God when the roll is called up yonder. Shalom.